Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Hey, this is Shannon Kringen. You're listening to Goddess Kring on Hollow Earth Radio. Podcast number, gosh, is it 22 on March 16th, 2017? I think I got to double check that. Thingy Mick Jagger. How is everybody today? It's podcast number, oh, I got to clear my throat. Oh, clear your throat in a musical way. Goddess Kring, podcast number 22, March 16th, 2017. I'm still alive. There's a poem I wrote called Suicide Spiral Staircase. I just want to kill myself. I just want to kill myself. Kill myself. Feel myself. Feel myself. Spill myself. Spill myself. Afraid to live. Afraid to die. Afraid to die. Afraid to live. Afraid to die. Afraid to die. Sentence on earth. Years and years and years. So that's one of my poems, at least part of one of my poems that I never really finished writing. I've been going through a difficult time lately. I think about suicide a lot, and I'm not saying that to freak anybody out. I have a therapist. I call the crisis line whenever I need to. I find ways to cope with my demons. I tough it out, mostly. I know that one day I will get to pass away and rest in peace, and I'm actually comforted by that. I'm a little bit afraid of death, uh, but I am comforted by the fact that we all get to rest in peace one day, although I can't speak for anyone else. I definitely don't want to live forever. Um, If I'm happy, I'd like to live till 100, 2068 would be the end of my life, but I'll probably die before then. But I am now 48 years old. And I think about moving out of the country, out of the United States of America, because I'm kind of a democratic socialist and I don't really fit in here with this extreme cutthroat capitalism society that we live in. But I'm happy that tonight I get to model in Tacoma for an art studio. I get to be the naked person that they draw. I get to figure model. So my full-time job is figure model for artists. I also do portrait modeling for various art classes, but I'm just acknowledging right now, my name is Shannon Nicole Kringen. I was born October 25th, 1968 in San Diego, California. I'm the only child of two parents who met at Arizona State University. My father was there on a tennis scholarship because he's an amazing athlete. He's 71 years old right now, and he's still an amazing athlete. He's amazingly fit. Fit and trim. He still wears the same size Levi's that he wore in high school, and he's damn proud of it. And he's extremely healthy. So I'm really happy about that. And my mom is... She was on an academic scholarship at Arizona State University. So both my parents were very intelligent people on scholarships. And she was more of an academic. My dad is more of an athlete. So my dad was interested in philosophy and comedy and music. My mom was interested in architecture and botany. And she got into art and clay and metal And they basically got pregnant with me and dropped out of college and had me and moved from Arizona to San Diego, California, because my grandparents lived there on one side of the family. So basically, to make a long story short, we lived in San Diego. My parents divorced when I was about four. I saw my dad on weekends. And then there was just a series of... uh, moves and divorces and marriages and various upheavals and various shocking things that kind of triggered me to have post-traumatic stress disorder and various different other problems. <clears throat> God, I need to clear my throat. I'm really sorry. I need a cough drop. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> oh my gosh, I really need to clear my throat. I am so horrified that Donald Trump is our president, but I just wanted to say this is what's going on with me. I had to take my car to the mechanic Thankfully, I know an amazing mechanic named Christopher Goodwin on Capitol Hill in Seattle, and he knows how to work on foreign cars. I have a smart car, which is made by Mercedes-Benz, 
and it's very expensive to repair. So I had quite a hefty bill yesterday on my car. I had to get a new oil pan because I found out that this wham bam, thank you ma'am, place that I was taking it to for oil changes, which I thought was a good place because it has a good reputation. Apparently they strip the metal thingy McJagger on my oil pan in my car got stripped and so I had to get an entirely new oil pan on my car. I also sometimes have taken my car to the Mercedes-Benz dealership, which, a total, which is a total ripoff because they don't believe in cleaning and lubing and adjusting parts. They believe in throwing all parts away that are gunky and just we're giving you a new part for $3,000 as opposed to just cleaning it and relubing it for $300. So I basically I have a good mechanic. I'm really, really lucky. Uh, and I was able to pay my bill and I was able to pay my income tax this year and hope I don't get audited because I think I did my Schedule C wrong. I always want to say Section C. <laughs> I never had a C-section. I had an abortion in 1996, which I'm still kind of trying to forgive myself for. I should have never gotten pregnant in the first place. To be honest, I never really wanted to have kids and I met this polyamorous guy who wanted to have a baby with me and be polyamorous and go live on a hippie commune in Colorado or somewhere and I was terrified so I changed my mind. I allowed myself to become pregnant because he refused to sleep with me unless I mated with him. And then I chickened out, basically. So I have to forgive myself for that. And I've never wanted to get pregnant ever since then, that's for sure. So, yeah, I never had a C-section. I had an abortion. But now I do Schedule C and I use TurboTax. So I'm confessing. I love Jimmy Carter and Bernie Sanders. I wish they would put... Uh, this is what I wish I could do. I wish I could brainwash Donald Trump into doing the right thing, which is to give us all universal nonprofit health care. Because it's a crime against humanity that there's price gouging. Oh, check this out. And solar panels. I want there to be a solar wind farm on the White House lawn. And I want there to be solar panels on the White House. And I want him to drive an electric car and promote electric cars and solar power. Jimmy Carter is making a huge uh, solar power plant on some of his property in Georgia and it's enough to power 200 homes. I know there's also sculptures that look like trees that blow in the wind that generate enough power to power a home of, with a family of four inside. And they're installing them in France. Not in the USA because we're pretty old fashioned here in this country. We still, it's like cowboys and Indians and redneck wild west mentality with guns and big fat gas guzzling American trucks that get shitty gas mileage. Pardon my language. You're listening to Goddess Kring podcast on Hollow Earth Radio. Thank you for having me. Sorry I'm a little angry today. If this is upsetting you, don't listen. Freedom and democracy. Okay, so I, I, uh, I, uh, somebody I met recently used to live in England He's an American and he lived in England because we were talking about health care and how we think the U.S. needs to catch up with the rest of the world and give its citizens universal nonprofit health care and stop the practice of price gouging. What does price gouging mean? It means they artificially jack prices up just to make a profit off of people and they consider citizens customers, not patients. So that in itself is unethical and wrong. But my friend said that he was shocked when he came back. He needed an antibiotic called tetracycline, which I guess is one of the most commonly prescribed antibiotics. And in England, the pills were 75 cents each for tetracycline. In the United States, the tetracycline pills were $12 each. So do the math. 75 cents versus $12 for one pill. So that means if you got a whole bottle of pills, it would be like 50, 60, 80, 100 bucks for like a big bottle of pills. Like, you know, 10 pills would be $120 versus 10 pills in England would be $7.50. So that just, there's a one concrete example of how the United States medical system rips off citizens of the United States. I am so angry about this. Not to mention ambulance rides can be $800 or 
or $85 or $0, depending on what ambulance company you call and what state you live in. That is one kind of freedom that I do not support. The freedom for corporations to rip us off, price gouging. Even my friend in England who has a really good internet connection, which is twice as fast as mine, his internet is only about $50 a month. I pay $70 a month for a crappy internet connection. So with a company that I won't even mention the name of, but I will say my friend in England has a better price on his internet and it's higher speed than mine. It's twice as fast as mine. His mobile phone bill is only about 30 or $40 a month equivalent in British pounds because I, told, I asked him and he gave me the British pounds and then I did the math and converted it to US dollars. So it's about $40 a month and he gets a really good mobile phone with unlimited everything. So there are better, better deals in England. And yes, it's more expensive to buy gas in England, which they call petrol. And it's more expensive to get a driver's license, apparently. But generally, the wages are higher in England, depending on what, what industry you work in. I know that nurses in England don't get paid very much. Nurses in America get paid more, but then they have like $150,000 in student loans. I owe about $67,000 for my bachelor's degree that I got here in Seattle at Antioch University, which I've never used for any kind of job. I really enjoyed going to Antioch University. It's an alternative college which emphasizes social justice, spiritual studies, and progressive learning, and helping homeless people and doing the right thing in life, and having a heart and a soul and ethics. And I appreciate that I went there for that reason. And there's no grades or no tests. There's lots of essays and written evaluations. You self-evaluate and you let your instructors evaluate you. So I'm really, really glad that I went to that school and got my degree. And when I was a kid, my mom put me in alternative school for fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, where I learned a lot about art and Native Americans and different cultures. And we were encouraged to do individualized learning. And nobody picked on me. Nobody picked, none of the kids picked on any of the other kids because all of our unique qualities were appreciated. It wasn't marching to the meat grinder like it is in public school. Although I do believe in protecting public schools and being in existence. So that's all for now. I need to take a break and be back in a minute. I will play some poetry next for you. I get to run to the dentist now. My Obamacare, I love my affordable health care. I am low income. I make about 1500 bucks a month on average. So I qualify for the best Obamacare that there is, which is free but I can only get my teeth cleaned once a year and get x-rays and fillings once a year therefore now I need to go and prove my income and try to get on the sliding scale list because I was informed that one of my teeth has a crack in it and so I need to get a cap on it before it gets any worse apparently which is eleven hundred dollars which hopefully I can get a discount on and do make payments on or maybe I won't do it Maybe I'll just fly to Costa Rica and get my teeth worked on like my dad does. My dad actually works full time, has a really good job, and he has supposedly good health insurance, but they don't cover dental very well. So he flew to Costa Rica and it only cost him $5,000 for airfare, hotel, and all the dental work he needed and food. $5,000 versus $20,000 that it would have cost him if he'd stayed in Seattle and gone to the dentist here just for the dental work. No food, no airfare, and no hotel. So there it is, 400% cheaper in Costa Rica. I also know a guy who takes his whole family on vacation in Poland where they visit relatives and they all go to the dentist because they can get affordable, low-cost dental treatment that's perfectly good in Poland. So there's many reasons to go to Europe. One of them is to get some dental care, <laughs> which is less expensive even with airfare than it is here in the United States, depending on what kind of work you need done. And I'm still feeding my cat raw meat diet and he's thriving. And I eat diatomaceous earth every day. I call it mud water. It's full of minerals. I get the 100% food grade. That's the only safe kind to eat. So I highly recommend it. I need to run to the dentist now and apply for my low income sliding scale. 
Um, I got actually into a debate with a woman recently online about the government. She thinks there needs to be less government. I think there needs to be better government, not less, not more, but better government. A government that actually serves the people and not just the shareholders that are in their club. The wealthy elite that run the USA Incorporated, the military industrial complex. I think we need a government that's full of social, social, let's see, democratic socialists, a la Bernie Sanders that believe in protecting the rights of everyday human beings that are middle class and poor and low income and elderly and handicapped and mentally ill and homeless, etc. Regular people, not just the wealthy people. Make the corporations pay their fair share of taxes. Eliminate profit and capitalism from the medical industry. Stop thinking of medicine and healthcare as a commercial business and start catching up with the rest of the world and realize that medical treatment is a public service that should be non-profit for all citizens, rich, poor, young, old, sick, and healthy. Stop the price gouging. Line up with the prices around the world. Also raise federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. Right now, federal minimum wage in the United States of America is $7.25 an hour, which is way below poverty level. If you work full-time at $7.25 an hour minus taxes, you're not going to be able to afford to live in an apartment. So it's insane. Goddess Kring Radio. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring. Shannon Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring. Okay, so this is Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen on Hollow Earth Radio, and I just got back from the dentist. I rode my bike to get the free parking and the exercise, and I'm happy to report back that I have a small crack in one of my teeth, and I have, thanks to my Obamacare, I have my dental is covered, basic dental is covered, but a crown would be $1,100, and so I qualify for the best discount for low-income people, which would mean that a crown for me would be $489 cash. So I need to pay that in full for them to do the crown. I've never had a crown before. Anybody listening know anything about crowns? I want to make sure I really need this, but they told me that the crack is small right now, but they don't know how long my tooth will last and the crack might get worse and the tooth could fall apart. And then I would need something more serious than a crown, like a root canal or an implant or who knows what. Or maybe I'll just fly to Costa Rica like my dad, but I might get a crown on one of my teeth. The other thing I wanted to talk about is, so I'm really, 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 really grateful that I still have my affordable health care, Obamacare. Until the end of 2017, I guess I'm safe. And I don't know what's going to happen after that in 2018. So, the other thing I wanted to talk about was suicide, a suicide spiral staircase, moonstone sand dune, sandstone moon dune, high bloom through the roots in cahoots, sliding doors, eyes adore, ocean beam, come clean, come clean, manifesting dreams, black fire, feather rain, straining the stream of consciousness again. Again, volcano ash erupting green, enchanted fingers filter rain. So that's a little poem that I wrote many years ago. Suicide is uh, a juicy topic. And don't worry, I have a mother and a father and a therapist and the crisis line and my own spiritual wisdom and consciousness. So I'm not saying this to cry out for help, and I'm not saying this to freak anybody out. I'm just saying this to be honest. I'm saying that I think about suicide a lot, and lately I've thought about it a lot more because I've been going through a bad time because I had an issue with one of my breasts, which turned out to be nothing. I had a ultrasound, and they thought they saw something on my breast, and I had breast reduction surgery, and so it turns out that it might have just been scar tissue or a shadow on the screen. And they were going to do a needle biopsy, and then they canceled that and told me to come back in six months if I feel like it. So 
I may or may not go back in six months and I might talk to a naturopath about getting thermography because I don't really want the radiation. But the other thing is, is that suicide, I thought about that because I had a car issue recently and I had just all these different issues coming up. My, my filling fell out, then I had to go to the dentist, and then I had a car issue, and then I had a breast issue, and I forgot what else, but I have like a very stressful job, but I'm really grateful. I get to work at like 20 different places, and I rush around all over town, and so I zip around in my tiny little car that gets 40 miles to the gallon, and it's the first car I've ever owned, and I bought it used, and I'm still paying it off, and I'm almost done paying it off. It's amazing, so it's been about five years pretty much done paying with my paying for my car so it doesn't really cost me a lot to have my car and I'm really grateful that I have it and I got a recent thing fixed on it because this other mechanic shop stripped it and so I had to get a new oil pan which was real real expensive so that's the drawback is that I have a little tiny smart car which is made by Mercedes so it's real expensive to repair but it's a high quality car and they're high quality parts but the one thing I was going to say about suicide is that I don't really know for sure, but I think I believe in reincarnation and I feel that reincarnation might be true. I went into hypnotherapy in the early 90s and the lady had me imagine I was in a canoe and she had me tell her what I saw when the fog lifted. So I was in a canoe in a river and it was really, really thick fog. And then the fog lifted. And I think the first thing I saw was I was a Japanese man who was about 40 and I was in a robe and sandals. I might have been barefoot, I don't know, but this was a long time ago, like hundreds of years ago when everything was handmade. All the fabric and shoes was hand, were handmade. And I was Japanese. And my twin brother was also 40. And I think we were some kind of monks or samurais or some kind of unusual people in this village. And I remember we were being ostracized by the village. And in this current lifetime of mine, my mom is my twin brother in this past life. And we were both 40 years old. And I remember we were ostracized from the village because we were doing something unorthodox and the traditional people in the village said, hey, you can't do that. You have to just be traditional. And my twin brother, who is my mom in this life, said, okay, let's just leave this village and go be hermits and hide out in the country up in the hills. We're just going to hide out in a little cabin in the hills or a cave or something and just hide out and live in our own way and get away from these people who are trying to force us to be traditional and tell us we can't be progressive or different or unusual. So she did that. My twin brother, who's my mom in this life, she just decided to go live up in the hills away from the villagers who were ostracizing us. And I decided to commit suicide. I said, no, no, if I'm not allowed to be who I really want to be in this village, I'm just going to kill myself. Screw you people. So I took a sword and I did Harry Carey, I think. So that must, and we must not have been monks. I thought maybe we were monks. Maybe we were samurai. I don't know. I just know that we were Japanese 40-year-old male twins. And I took a sword or a knife and I stabbed myself in the stomach and killed myself. And that's, that's what I remember. And I remember feeling a lot of pain and bleeding. So that's one of the lifetimes that I remembered when I was under hypnotherapy. And then the, the next life I saw was equally disturbing, actually more disturbing. This is what happened. This, this is actually, the reason why I'm telling you this is because this kind of stuff, it made me definitely not want to commit suicide. It made me feel like, okay, if this is literally true and in past lives I did this, that's really horrible and I don't want to repeat this pattern of giving up on life and, and escaping and wanting to run away. Or if reincarnation is not true, and this is maybe just my subconscious mind making up symbolic stories, even if that's the case, I can still learn from this. And the message is, don't try to just run away and escape and avoid dealing with your life. So just live your life and let nature take you when it's time for you to rest in peace instead of prematurely ending your life. So the other lifetime that I saw under hypnotherapy 
was I was a 14 year old blonde haired girl and I think it was in Australia. I hung myself from a tree and killed myself. And the reason why I hung myself from a tree as a 14 year old was that I was pregnant. I was in love with our black Aboriginal slave, this black man. I was in love with him and I, ha I was going to have a baby with him. And my father, my white father, we lived on a farm or a ranch in Australia. My father found out that I was pregnant and I think he killed our slave who is an Aborigine. Now, I don't even know if Aborigines were slaves in Australia. So this could be that it's an American story and that maybe it's not Australia. Maybe I was an American living on a farm. I don't really know, but it was back in the days that where they had slaves. And so my father killed our black slave that I was pregnant with, the child of, and I saw him do this and I was so heartbroken and angry with my father and sad that I couldn't love the man that I loved who happened to be black and I was white. I hung myself from a tree and killed myself and my unborn child. So that was the other, the other past life memory that I had. And those are the only two memories that popped into my head when I was under hypnotherapy and it scared me and rattled me to the point where I've never wanted to do hypnotherapy again in terms of exploring past lives. I mean, maybe my subconscious made those two stories up and it's symbolic, again, symbolic of basically the pattern in those two lifetimes, as tragic as they were, the pattern is I was a person who felt like I wasn't allowed. I was ostracized from one village and told that I had to conform or leave the village, not allowed to be who I really was in this village. And then the other lifetime was I was not allowed to love the man that I loved and have his child and live happily with him. So I decided instead of toughing out my life circumstances and making choices to live out my natural life, I chose to end it prematurely because I was so angry. In this lifetime, I sometimes feel like ending my life because I feel like I'm stuck, like I'm a figure model and I love modeling and I work for lots of different people. But I'm frustrated because I have a lot of talent in my art with my photography and my abstract drawings and some of the musical and poetry things I've done. I have a lot of different talents, but I don't seem to know how to use that to make money. So I feel trapped and I got into modeling because it pays. And I don't really even love realistic art. So I used to take figure drawing classes and I never really loved doing figure drawing. So that's why I got into modeling because I thought, okay, if I become the model, then I can get paid by the hour and I can let them draw me because I don't like drawing the figure because I, when I draw, I like to draw shapes and designs and non-representational non symbolic abstract designs. I'm inspired by the infinite intricate patterns that I see in plants and animals and nature. And I'm also inspired by what I see when I look out an airplane window when I'm flying above land masses. So my abstract art, if you go to shannonkringen.com, if you just Google Shannon Kringen designs, you'll see what I mean. And I'm inspired by Hunter Wasser, who's an Austrian artist who's passed away, and Gaudi, the Spanish guy Gaudi, who did architecture. I'm inspired by those guys and Gustav Klimt and Francis Bacon and Picasso and many different other abstract artists. I also share a birthday with Picasso. October 25th is my birthday. Same with Picasso. Although I was born in 1968, Picasso was born in 18, 18 something. But that's just an interesting side note there. So there it is. So those are my past life suicide stories. And hopefully if you're listening, if you've ever thought about suicide, please call the 24 hour crisis clinic hotline, which is 206-461-3222. That is the local number here in Seattle for the suicide, not suicide, but crisis clinic hotline 24 hours a day. They'll help you. Um, but I mean, I'm hoping that my stories help inspire you in some way to have faith in yourself. I feel basically I feel trapped sometimes and like I would rather just try to escape than have to try to fix my problems because what I keep doing is I keep modeling and I do enjoy modeling, but my body is getting tired and I'm 48 and I don't know if I can do this in another 20 years and I have a lot of other talents, but I, it seems like I have a huge phobia. I mean, according to this, the therapist that I see, 
various therapists I've seen over the years, I suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder, borderline personality disorder, um, a, a rapid cycle version of manic depression, bipolar, which is called cyclothymia, which means my moods change up and down, up and down, up and down really fast. But I'm never like completely manic and I'm never totally depressed. I'm always just kind of a little agitated, a little moody. And I have mild euphoria and mild depression. And it goes up and down, up and down, up and down like a roller coaster. And I spin in circles all the time with my moods. And the reason why I keep modeling is because no matter what kind of mood I'm in, whether it's a good mood or a bad mood, I always seem to be able to be a good figure model. I show up, I take my clothes off, or I sit with a costume on, and I pose for artists, and I sit still, and I basically get paid to meditate. And so I'm really, really grateful and happy this job calms me down. I feel safe and calm when I'm earning money doing something useful that helps other people. And so it could be that modeling is the perfect job for me because I keep doing it and I've done it for 25 years. And it seems like no matter what kind of mood or stressed out situation I'm in, I can always show up and model and do a good job for them. So other jobs have not been like that. I find other jobs have been very, very stressful for me. So, and most of my other jobs have been minimum wage, really horrible jobs. So I really love being a figure model. It's just that sometimes I'm very tired. My, my body gets physically tired. My shoulders and, and, and neck aches, and I'm not particularly flexible. So I can't really twist and bend. I'm not real limber, but I really know how to hold still and take interesting poses. And people love to paint me and draw me and sculpt me. So I'm really, really grateful, but I wish sometimes, and I guess I'm going to go see a career counselor and see if I can get some more new ideas, but I don't know. I also love animals and plants, and the idea of being a massage therapist appeals to me sometimes, but I know that's very physically demanding work as well. So these are just some of the ideas that I have in my mind, and I am just trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do in the future because I'm 48 and I'm going to work at least another 20 years. I also volunteer at the zoo because I love being around the animals and I know a lot of people think zoos are really bad. I think that zoos are mostly positive and there's some negativity because the animals are held captive but the animals are also protected and well fed every day and they get veterinary care if they get injured or sick and they need help or if they're suffering tremendously, then they get euthanized. And so they don't have to die a slow, painful death. So basically, zoos, I think, are more positive than they are negative. I love being there. I love being around the plants and animals and the landscaping and the quiet peacefulness and being friendly and smiling with other people. So and seeing the cute kids and their parents. Okay, and I also love animals. Whenever I'm upset, animals calm me down, plants calm me down. And now I'm getting a text message. Okay, there it is. So I guess even recording my voice is sort of calming me down right now. I'm feeling better now. I'm feeling more calm. So there it is. So thank you for listening. My name is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. This is Hollow Earth Radio, the Goddess Kring podcast, number 22 on March 16th, 2017. I don't remember if I already said this, but there was a guy that I met that's American and he lived in England for a while. He was married to a British woman and they divorced and he moved back to the USA and he needed tetracycline and it was 75 cents per pill in England with their socialized medicine. He came back to the United States and he found out that tetracycline was $12 a pill here in the United States. So that's an example right there of price gouging. In other words, companies just want to make a profit and they jack the price as high as they can get away with and then they make a profit. And then they lie to us as Americans and say that they have to charge that much because American drugs are better than other drugs or they're more tested or that's just what the price has to be. Like a hospital can charge $10 for an aspirin in the United States, whereas in England it's discouraged and they actually have... The federal government in England has federal regulations against price gouging. And the pharmaceutical companies are not allowed to jack prices up the way they are here in this country. So my fantasy would be to have a government in the United States that would regulate and keep prices down 
and not refer to us as consumers. We are not consumers. We are consumers of large screen televisions and, you know, commercial products that we go to shopping malls and buy. But when we are going to the dentist or the eye doctor or any kind of doctor, we are patients. We are citizens that need health care and medical treatment. So imagine going to the public library and being charged $1,000 to check out a library book. Everybody would laugh. But when you go to the medical establishments, sometimes you are charged $1,000 for something that should cost 10 bucks. So it's absurd. And so it's so, 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 so unethical the way our medical system works. And I have my affordable health care, Obamacare, and I'm low income enough, so mine is free. And I wish that everybody could have the kind of health care that I have in this country, young, old, rich, poor, sick, and healthy. So I was going to say that health care is a public service, not a commercial business, but the way it's run here is commercial business. So I wish that Bernie Sanders was our president, and I know that he would be doing everything he could to help us get single payer, universal health care for all, bring the cost down, cover everybody for less than what we already spend. And I think he would be doing something to help clean up Fukushima, help build more solar power plants like Jimmy Carter is doing, help clean up the water infrastructure, the bridges, the roads, cut the military budget down, make sure to increase the budget for helping veterans and homeless people, make sure to decrease the budget for war and Wall Street, and actually spend money on things like solar power, wind power, turbines, clean up the water, invest money in fixing the pipes or fixing the water systems that we have in places like Michigan and various places around the country that have really old pipes or old water systems that need to be fixed because they're leaching toxic metals and chemicals and pesticides into the water supply, which is making people sick. This is supposedly a wealthy country and we treat people in this country, average citizens living in poverty while the rich get richer and the middle class is disappearing. So it's like our democracy is not really much of a democracy. It's more like rich people control things. Not that all wealthy people are bad, but wealthy people that work in the government are hoarding and embezzling the money and stealing it from society and keeping our wages low and not letting us have unions. And so I think Bernie Sanders would be trying to do everything he could to try to get the corruption to stop. But of course they would never let somebody like him in the White House. So these are just some of my thoughts and ideas. Now here's some music and some poetry. Shani Kring and Goddess Kring, I wanted to say, I archive this. It, this airs every week on Hollow Earth Radio, Thursdays, 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time in the United States. And I also archive it on my YouTube channel with my visual art as a slideshow and my Patreon, Mixcloud, and Bandcamp. So if you just go to Shannon Kringen Podcast, just Google Shannon Kringen Podcasts, you'll find more information. ShannonKringen.com is my main website where I just share my art and it's all free. And what else can I say? I have photos on Flickr that are Creative Commons and I love to share my photos. And I have music on my Bandcamp website that's free, MP3s, free to download. The Seattle Public Library has an album of mine called Synchronicity, which Claxton Kent and I created. When I went to Portland, we recorded, and he did the music and helped record it in his wonderful little recording studio. And I wrote the poetry, and I do the vocals. And so Seattle Public Library has Synchronicity by Goddess Kring and Claxton Kent in their collection called Playback, which is local, a database of local Pacific Northwest musicians. So I'm happy that I'm part of that collection. And I even received a small honorarium for doing that. So I'm really, really amazed and grateful for that. So these are some of the positive things happening in my life. And today I rode my bicycle to my dental appointment. And I'm happy that uh, a lot of my modeling gigs, well, not, actually not a lot, a few I can ride my bike to. So I might start doing that again to ease my stress about driving my car because I'm having some issues with my car, but it's mostly fixed and working pretty well. 
So I'm happy that I can commute. I also go to Linwood and get artesian well water in Linwood with no chemicals, with no chlorine and no fluoride. I drink natural water from the earth and I feel so lucky that I can get clean, healthy, natural mineral water from the earth and drink it. And I love it. And so I'm so grateful for that. And I'm so grateful that I have my affordable health care till at least the end of this year. And I don't know what will happen after that, but I'll do everything I can to protect myself and to be able to survive in this cutthroat capitalist society we live in. In Seattle, the rent is skyrocketing. There's no rent control. I have a very nice landlord and I have a Section 8 voucher. So my rent is only a third of my income and I am so grateful for that. So I think everybody deserves to, that needs that, should be able to get rent that's only a third of their income. We need rent control. So we also need the minimum wage raised. So there it is. So these are some of my thoughts. So why don't I play some music for you now? And I'll see you again. Thanks for tuning in. Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen. Okay, so now I'm continuing on another day recording this. It is now... March 16th, 2017, and you're listening to Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring podcast on Hollow Earth Radio, Seattle. So I want to say that I am so happy the sun is out right now. There's big white fluffy clouds in the Seattle sky, and I am finally alone. I have been hanging out with my boyfriend off and on, and... I had another friend uh, hanging out with me and now I am so happy to be back in my apartment by myself. I had a heck of a time last night um, commuting somewhere far away from Seattle and I got stuck in traffic and I kind of lost my cool and uh, vented a little bit on social media and then I had to erase and delete that to try to repair some damage that I did. So I'm trying to take responsibility for doing that and for feeling a little grumpy. Like I'm a very good figure model, generally speaking, but I have mood swing issues that are really starting to disrupt my life more. For a while, I was doing really well. I stopped eating wheat and gluten about three years ago or a little more than three years at this point, three and a half years maybe. And my moods got better, my thyroid got normal, and I uh, lost a bunch of weight. And I also just exercise and eat healthy. That's another reason why I I trimmed down a bit. But uh, I need cardiovascular exercise as much for my mental health as for my physical health. My dad was a tennis teacher, and he's very athletic and fit to this day. And he kind of raised me to eat healthy and exercise, even though throughout my life I've been a bit chubby. Some people even think I'm fat, but I guess by Hollywood emaciated skinny standards, I'm fat, but I've always had good muscle tone and I have kind of a um, muscular uh, body type as well as fairly large bones. I'm five, eight and a half and uh, at fit weight, I probably weigh weigh about 160. I think that um, generally we think of men as being five foot eight and a half or nine and weighing 160 and we think that's fit and then women for some reason think they have to weigh 125 or less it's kind of weird but I am built more like a guy so I don't know how much I weigh right now but I guess I'm like thinking about fitness and health right now and nutrition I just went to the healthy pet food store and got my cat some more frozen raw chicken hearts And I feed him venison, pork, turkey, beef, lamb, um, many different kinds of meat. And that's made specially raw frozen meat for, for cats. And it's mixed in with other things to make it nutritionally balanced. So I'm really grateful and happy about that. And I'm burning incense and I'm airing my apartment out. And I have a whole bunch of house plants that I want to repot that I've had some of them for 15 years. And hoping I can stay in this apartment for a long time. I've lived here about a year and a half, I think. Because I keep having to move um, because of of people raising the rent. But now that I have my Section 8, I think I'm going to be able to stay here for a while. And or whenever I have to move again, I can take my Section 8 voucher with me and find another place. But I would really like to find some sense of stability. 
It seems like I sadly can only really feel good when I'm by myself. I'm trying to cohabitate with my boyfriend when I visit him, but lately I've had a hard time feeling harmonious. And I don't know, quite frankly, how much of that is that I'm not really fully compatible with him and how much of that is just my own personal demons that get in the way. Like one of my poems that goes, intimacy chasing me, feel like it's erasing me. Fragile sense of self, intangible desire for wealth. Those are kind of uh, phrases that popped into my head in reference to my self-esteem. I think I have post-traumatic stress disorder, borderline personality disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, various different things that kind of hinder my happiness as a human. And I feel like I have a lot of coping mechanism. There's, there's times when I think I'm a bit narcissistic, uh, which is a defense mechanism. I think there's really kind of two kinds of narcissists. There's a narcissist that never thinks they make mistakes, never says they're sorry, always blames other people, just doesn't, doesn't really feel very self-reflective, really thinks they can do no wrong, but has no trouble judging others. And they're kind of really self-centered and maybe don't have a lot of empathy or compassion about how they affect other people. I'm not like that. But what I am like is I'm somebody who takes thousands of self-portraits and puts them on my website and I'm more comfortable being a model and feeling special, feeling like I'm the only model in the room and everyone else is drawing me. Not that I'm more important than other people, but that I'm different and special and I have a different role to play. I'm very comfortable being the only one in the room who's the model or the only one in the room that's wearing bright colors or the only one in the room that's being quiet or going up on stage and reading my poetry or performing or things like that. I also love being alone. So kitty kitty and my poor kitty needs a walk outside. So as soon as I finish recording this, I'm going to put my kitty in his little harness and we're going to take a walk out in the fresh grass and get some fresh air. But I will say that I've been having a heck of a time lately with my moods and with my anxiety. I had a, a breast biopsy issue, which I didn't have to thankfully have. And then I had a car mechanic issue. And then I had a dental tooth issue. And now I'm just trying to juggle all of my modeling jobs with my therapy, with my volunteering at the zoo, with all my different things. So I guess this podcast is Shannon Kringen's audio diary. <laughs> so how are you guys today? I don't know if anybody's actually listening to this podcast, but I do enjoy recording my voice. I feel like it's relaxing me. I'm feeling more calm. I'm feeling more stable because I'm burning incense and I'm doing my laundry and I'm sitting here with my kitty. Kitty, kitty. I'm going to take you for a walk in a minute, Kisun. Kisun. I'm going to take you for a walk. So Kisun needs his walk. I just fed him some pork, some raw frozen pork meat from the health food pet store. I know that I'm very, very repetitive. People who used to watch my TV show, Goddess Crane, used to remark on how repetitive I was and how redundant I was, partly because I have no script and I'm just doing this improv monologue style, but also because I am very OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. I go around in circles, round and round in circles, and it's really hard for me to keep it fresh. Although I think sometimes I have interesting things to say that hopefully are useful to other people, or at least useful to myself. So I think the kind of narcissist I am is somebody who feels really insecure about themselves. I know that I have talent as a model. I know that I have artistic talent as a photographer. As a poet, as a designer, I know that my voice, people have said they like my voice and that they find it pleasant. I'm a bit musical. I'm a bit athletic. I'm really good with my cat and my houseplants. I mean, I have abilities and I have confidence in those abilities, but I seem to have this intense sense of shame. I like to say, tame the shame, suck the sugar cane meaning enjoy life. If you, if you don't feel ashamed all the time, then you're allowed to enjoy the nectar of life and be happy and joyful. I tend to feel guilty a lot and ashamed. If I make a mistake, I feel guilty and ashamed that I screwed up and I want to apologize for the mistake I made. 
And then when I do something really well, for a minute, I feel like, wow, I did a good job. And then I start feeling guilty, especially if someone is jealous of me. Like in high school, I used to win tennis matches and then I would feel guilty. I would feel like I had to win. I have to win. I have to win. And I was a really good left-handed tennis player in high school. And I won almost every match I ever played. And I was really good at singles tennis but horrible at doubles tennis because I didn't trust my partner and I didn't want a partner. I wanted to be solo. I like to be a solo tennis player, a singles tennis player. And I remember once I started losing and I started hyperventilating in high school on the tennis court. And then thankfully I was able to take a small break and have some water and get back in the match and I ended up winning. And then I felt like, yeah, I won. But then I looked at the face of the person who lost to me and they looked really sad and angry and upset that they lost and then I felt guilty and ashamed. Almost like I cheated and I'm a fraud. But I think even Amanda Palmer, the musician, talks about this in her book, The Art of Asking, The Fraud Police. She talks about how sometimes artists can feel like frauds and feel like they're not as good as they're supposed to be. And when people find out, you know, then they'll get fired from their artist job or, or something like that. Like basically just a certain kind of sensitivity and insecurity that creative artist people have. So I definitely have a highly sensitive nervous system. And I kind of feel like the Wizard of Oz, like, like Goddess Kring is a persona that I project into the world that is like, the Wizard of Oz. And then Shannon Kringen is this little scared, shy, introverted woman who has the guts to be a figure model, but is kind of embarrassed about it. Like if I do really well at something, even when people say they love my hair, my beautiful, natural, curly, Nordic, blondish hair that I streak blonde, um, I, I feel like, oh, thank you. And I feel very blessed that I was born with beautiful hair, but then I feel kind of like guilty or like sorry for people who have hair that they don't like. So I like my hair and I like my fingernails. I like my eyes. I like my lips. I like my, you know, so maybe I'm a bit self-involved. Maybe that is a bit narcissistic to obsess and dwell on the self. Although I spend a lot of time beating myself up and feeling ashamed and feeling guilty. So I'm the kind of narcissist, if I am a narcissist, and I'm, try I'm not saying that to put myself down and be really mean to myself and be hard on myself, but I don't know how to not, to me, it feels like I'm taking responsibility and I'm trying to be self-aware. Maybe I've done too much therapy. You know, I've been in and out of therapy since I was 22 and I'm now 48. So that's like many, many years of therapy. And now I'm looking more into post-traumatic stress disorder and how maybe my biggest issue is that and how to cope with that. So I feel like if I'm narcissistic, it's because I'm just trying to cope with being insecure and feeling scared of other people and being afraid in the world to really trust other people. And in fact, there's a pattern right now. I talked earlier about my past lives where I think I committed suicide twice by hanging myself and by doing Harry Carey or stabbing myself with a knife in Japan hundreds of years ago as a male Japanese man. <sighs> um, so there's a pattern of feeling like I can't be myself and I don't trust other people around me. But I know that if I trust myself, that's the key to everything. If I can love and trust myself, then I'm more likely to figure out who I can trust in the world and who I can't. But I recently went to the dentist and at one point they said I had a crack in my tooth and they go, you have a crack in your tooth. You might need to get that capped or crowned. And then they said, you don't have a crack. And now they're back to saying I do have a crack. So it's like, do I trust these people? Are they right or wrong about me having a crack? And do I really need a crown? I found out yesterday that I qualify for low income dental. I have Obamacare, Apple Care in Washington state and most of my dental is covered, basically just regular cleanings. Once a year, I can get my teeth cleaned, x-rayed, and I can get fillings, but I can't get any crowns. And so I qualify. The normal price for a crown in Seattle is $1,100. I qualify for four, uh, 489 I can get a crown for $489, which I guess is a pretty good deal because that's less than half price, but there's no payment plan, so I have to pay in full. 
So I have to decide if I want to get a crown on this tooth that has a crack in it because it might get worse eventually. But right now it's a very tiny crack apparently. And then I had a filling that they did six months ago and it fell out. And someone told me silver fillings are the best, but they told me they did a silver filling. So this time they filled it with some other material. I don't know what it is. And they said they think it would stick better to my tooth and not fall out, hopefully. But they did tell me that I have a filling in my last tooth on the bottom, on both sides actually, and both of them have fallen out a couple times. So now I'm back to going, you know, it's fine right now because they just refilled it. But I'm hoping this filling will last a few years at least. So I'm a little concerned because I'm 48 now. I'm a little concerned about what's going to happen with our health care because of the new administration. And I'm also concerned about my teeth eventually needing root canals or crowns. So I have to figure this out. And then the mechanic, one mechanic shop did something weird to my car that made me have to get a new oil pan. And that was several, several hundred dollars. So to get for the repairs and the new part. I have a smart car, so it's kind of expensive to get it repaired, although I get 40 miles to the gallon. So I have issues with the mechanic. And then my breast exam turned out something was weird. And then they made a mistake, and apparently there's nothing wrong with my breasts. So I basically had a car mechanic situation, which made me feel like, who can I trust? A dental situation, which made me feel like, who can I trust? And the third thing is a breast thing. So I got to figure all this stuff out. And then the other thing I wanted to say was government. I feel like the government's job in a democracy, the USA in the democracy is supposed to be to serve the people, not just the wealthy corporate elite and the wealthy 1%, but the regular poor and middle class, young and old, etc. And so I don't want less government. I want different government. I want funding to be put in place, nonprofit infrastructure for socialized single payer health care, for mass transit, for fixing the roads, for keeping our water clean, for putting money and investing money instead of it all going to the military and prison and Wall Street and corporate bailouts and corporate tax cuts and loopholes where they don't have to pay their taxes. A real democracy would be where we would put federal money into raising the federal minimum wage, into having single payer nonprofit health care, and into having a good infrastructure of roads and bridges and mass transit and solar power and wind power and public schools and public education and especially cleaning up the water. So every time I go to Europe, I feel so envious of the amazing train stations, amazing public art, the amazing amount of money that they put into mass transit, and they spend less on health care per capita than we do, about half in some countries, and they give everyone health care because there's no price gouging. Like for antibiotics, it's 75 cents a pill versus $12 a pill here in the United States. So that's just one example. So thank you for listening. My name is Shannon Kringen. This is Goddess Kring on Hollow Earth Radio, Seattle. So have a wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in. I welcome questions and comments. Go to shannonkringen.com. Click on contact. Find my email. And I archive this. It plays live on Hollow Earth Radio, Thursdays, 3 to 4 p.m. I also archive it on YouTube, Patreon, Mixcloud, and Bandcamp. Just go to Shannon Kringen Podcasts. Just Google that and you'll find more information. So thank you. I'm an artist and an experimental, open-minded thinker. I'm a free thinker, nonconformist, loner, introvert. So thank you for listening. And peace and love to everyone. And be yourself no matter what they say. Authentic ejaculation of my soul. Molten orange liquid glow. Anger takes its toll. Blowing status quo. So remember to question everything. And be authentic. Or be fake if you want. But my advice is to be authentic. Have a good day. I'm going to walk my kitty cat. Kisoo! Cranberry moondrops. Cranberry moon dream. High bloom through the roots. In cahoots. Sliding doors, eyes adore. Ocean beam, come clean, come clean. 
manifesting dreams, black fire feather rain, strain the stream of consciousness again, volcano ash erupting green, enchanted fingers filter rain, down the drain in chains again. Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringling, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringling, Goddess Kring, Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringling, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringling, Goddess Kring.